Hey, good afternoon. I'm Matt Scarborough, Scarborough Bicycle Accident Law, and I'm super excited today to have the one and only Joella Nicole here with us on the podcast. And we've been absent from the podcast for a while, and most of you know us as supporters, of course, of cyclists in the cycling community in Florida, but there's been some really big news, which is now we've opened up Bend, Oregon office, and we can now represent cyclists coast to coast. Um, many of you may not know that we represent athletes and individuals in a lot of different capacities after traumatic events all throughout the country. And I wanted to start this podcast series on all of our sponsored athletes. So we happen to have my favorite one, of course, Jola, not only is uh, an ultra runner, a runner, my friend, life partner, but also, yes, a sponsored athlete of Scarborough Bicycle Accident Law. So thank you for being here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Sure. Um, people may not know that besides being a runner, an ultra runner, um, you are actually an excellent cyclist. You don't admit that yet. Are an excellent cyclist. You're running the New York City Marathon here in a few weeks, which I want to touch on. You've recently done a strengthening women roundtable, which I think is super important and great to touch on. And you're also, I got to be very careful about this, an LMFT and have owned Cascade Family Therapy since 2015. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Kind of your origin story as a runner because I know a lot of people especially in Florida maybe here in Oregon know you as that yeah I began running uh, as part of doing triathlons in my early 20s I had a boss who trained and did the Ironman Coeur d'Alene and I got very inspired and thought to myself I mean I loved cycling and I loved swimming so if I could just make myself run a few miles then I'd have a triathlon so I started running then, and then I kind of put it on hold through undergrad and graduate school, and then found it again when I moved to Bend in 2014. And tell us a little bit about the events, kind of the ultra events you've done since that time. Yeah, when I moved to Bend, I discovered specifically trail running, which was way better than road running, in my opinion. And I went from a 10K race to a 50K race. Um, I just really found a love for being out in nature and discovering different trail networks. And then that led to races associated with those trail networks. So my first one in Bend was the Smith Rock Ascent out at Smith Rock State Park. Um, and I have also done the Bigfoot 40 miler, which is around Mount St. Helens, which is really beautiful to run through the blast zone and all that volcanic landscape. And uh, the past few years, I've been really focused on trying to complete Havelina 100 outside of Phoenix at the McDowell Mountain Park, which is also another very cool landscape. So you mentioned that road running isn't as great as trail running. Why are you doing the New York City Marathon? <laughs> kind of very roady here in a few weeks. Well, I think it's kind of evolved for me as I've found more of a love for running that it's kind of, it's a lot of different landscapes I'm drawn to and it's just iconic. I mean, I would love, to, I've never done a marathon before, um, so I figure it's a really iconic one to do. Well, you know, we were talking beforehand about why we want different people or why I want different people to, to represent Scarborough Bicycle Accident Law. And the folks that we have, luckily, are inspirational in different ways. And you're too shy to admit it, but kind of tell us, and you're an inspiration to me, tell us why, what's kind of the backstory about why you're doing this marathon? Yeah, so I discovered in November of last year uh, that I had endometriosis, stage three, meaning it was impacting organs. Um, and one of the women who worked at the office where I had surgery runs the Endometriosis Foundation of America um, marathon team and asked me if I would be a part of it. And at the time before surgery and having been in shape for a hundred miler, 
I was like, yeah, of course I'll come do this marathon. Mm -hmm. But as, after having surgery, um, which was a much bigger process than I anticipated, um, and recovering, now it really feels like something significant besides giving back to the Endometriosis Foundation of America. Yeah, I'm so happy that you're doing it, and I can't wait to watch you finish the watch you finish the race. You're right. coming up shortly. Um, tell us, I think it might, it might play into the marathon, but tell us a little bit about strengthening women. What was that all about here in Bend? Yeah, I found this really cool intersection between being a licensed marriage and family therapist, specializing in working with women, and my passion and love for endurance sport. And I've just been letting that kind of evolve together. Essentially, though, endometriosis uh, affects 10% of women across the world and takes, on average, 8 to 12 years to be diagnosed. Um, and treatment options are not great. I mean, it's really, it's a disease that most women just end up coping with. Um, and there is no treatment or that cures the disease. So it became just a big passion of, of how much women can cope with difficulty, <laughs> with pain and physical struggle, um, and how much the medical system is skewed towards males um, and men, and that there just is this huge need for women to have more of an ability to advocate, to be assertive about symptoms, and to not be afraid to keep revisiting something, even if they're shut down. Um, I commonly started my like annual physical appointment since I was 11 years old with I might have endometriosis because my mom has it and it wasn't until 2019 that a doctor was like oh that's interesting it actually kind of does sound like you have symptoms so it just shows there's just this huge gap I think of of knowledge, of research that will support women, and I really want to help to empower women to use their voice. And be strong. Yeah. That's wonderful. Maybe be a little less strong, though, because mm -hmm. that's what I've learned is that women have an incredible ability to grit and keep adapting, and when you're going to medical providers that are telling you, like, yeah, maybe it's endometriosis, but, like, it's not likely, um, women will just keep adapting. <laughs> until their quality of life is pretty poor. So I think that that's, that's part of strengthening women, ironically, is that uh, it's more about like, how do you actually apply the grit? Like, where do you put the grit um, besides just coping day to day? Sounds like a lot of questions for, from a lot of different people. I know your first event went really well. How do people find out about the next time you do this? Yeah, you can go to my website, joellanicole.com. Um, also, Paradox Strength uh, in Bend has been the one hosting us. Uh, there'll be information there. And also my Instagram, Joella Nicole. Um, you can find out about it there. Beautiful. So what is an LMFD? A <laughs> licensed marriage and family therapist. And how does that differ from other fields of psychology? Yeah. So it really is its own established field. It was actually being established and created at the exact same time that psychiatry was really gaining footing uh, in the early 1900s. But psychiatry and the medication and medical angle was able to get a lot more funding. So they're more popular, they're cool kids. Uh, and marriage and family therapy is a systemic discipline that is all about like mapping patterns and relational dynamics. There's also a big social justice component to it. Um, and there's other fields, counseling and uh, social work have some of those things, but marriage and family therapy is really the first to establish like that perspective. Have you thought at all about how your career ties into your passion for running or vice versa? Do they work together or are they separate things for you? Yeah, I used to joke that I'm just sponsoring myself. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> having my own practice is conducive to setting my own schedule and being able to train when I want to. Um, and I, I think it started from a place of really needing that time to process, like be out in the woods, uh, moving my feet and processing therapy and business and everything. Um, 
but I think it's starting to go kind of back the other way of like, and now it's really becoming something that's fueling what I'm doing. Beautiful. So kind of, this is an obvious question for everybody that's been here, but why been? Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <laughs> the access to the outdoors is huge and just slower, smaller pace of life. How about Florida? Why, what do you like Florida? Um, the open water swimming is amazing. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. Like you are an amazing open water swimmer. Like you did an event last a year ago. Where was that? St. Croix. Oh, uh, we won't tell the St. Croix story. But for those who that watch this uh, podcast, that don't know all about the St. Croix story. But tell us about the race, the St. Croix race. <laughs> yeah, it was a really awesome uh, swim event. I had wanted to do a little bit longer version. I think I did. I was did the two mile. Yes. I don't I remember which one I did. Right. Um, but yeah, it was awesome. It's from it was from like one bay out into the water and then back to another bay, uh, and it was gnarly conditions. Uh, everyone had encouraged me to sign up for this race because they were like, "Oh, it's flat and totally clear. It's basically snorkeling, no big deal." Um, but they had had a big storm right before we got there, and so there was like zero water clarity. Um, and I heard part of the appeal is there's lots of sharks, but I didn't get to see anything. Um, and it was rough seas. And you, you were first in your... In my age group. Yeah. Uh -huh. That still is first. Yeah. Still counts. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so for those runners out there that may be like, ah, I don't like cycling. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Um, I think they can complement each other quite a bit. How so? Uh, the time that you can add to your endurance and to your VO2 max and like all that good stuff can happen on the bike and really complement running. I mean, cycling is just a totally different thing. I've never bonked so hard. That's <laughs> what I've been keeping up with you. Um, so I think it can just be a really good compliment to, to not have so much impact on the body. And that's been part of it too, is like, I'm really turning a corner too of like more sustainability within my business and within um, now supporting other clinicians to do great work, uh, but also with my body and myself of like, how do I keep that endurance sport without spiking cortisol through the roof and uh, potentially causing other health things. Are those some of the things you talk about at the uh, Strengthening Women presentation? Yeah, it's really cool. I've found a um, strength trainer and a nutritionist, a registered dietitian, who both can speak a lot about longevity in sport in kind of some physical ways that I can't necessarily. Um, and we've really kind of married our work together in how setting, you know, emotional boundaries, but also being paying attention to recovery and nutrition um, and strength training, particularly for women. Um, that kind of like trifecta is particularly cool. That's great. So I know there are a lot of people out there hurting after Helene and Milton, gosh, really been impacted uh, in Florida and throughout the Southeast. Some of them may be, and well, we know them, our endurance athletes locally in Florida. Kind of from your perspective as an LMFT and as a runner, kind of what would, what would you tell them right now are important things to focus on? Yeah, I think when big events happen, it's really important to stay focused on the basics, which is more like a lot more recovery, a lot more time with friends and family, um, and really kind of being okay with maybe putting some of the harder efforts or like longer endurance things on hold because it physically, the body doesn't know the difference between a traumatic event like your house being flooded and needing to relocate and doing a 50K. Like your body biochemically does a lot of the same stress response. Yeah. What would your message to... You know, I know you've been doing a lot of work over the last few years, not only on your, your personal health, because of all the things you've just described, but, um, you know, your physical health through running. What would you, what would your message to women or women with endo, what would it be right now? What would you tell them to look at or focus on if there was one thing? 
Mm. I think listening to symptoms, I think it's really easy for women to get busy and to live with or just cope with symptoms. But emotional and physical symptoms are the only ways in which our body can be communicating with us. And uh, not everything is to be like dominated and pushed through and like, you know, grit through in life. That there's a quality of life that can be had when you're listening. Hmm. Beautiful. So, what is your favorite place to run? Oh, that's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think Mount St. Helens is still up there. Why? It's so vast, and it's like you run through so many different landscapes because of the way that the volcano affected different portions of that mountain and the area. So, like, in one moment, you're in this, like, really thick tunnel of pine trees, and then the next, you're on this, like, just outrageous hill of sand and ash and dirt um, and being able to get up close to the blast zone and be able to see it is really cool and, and unique because you need permits and usually takes a lot of planning. Yeah. Do you have a favorite running song? Well, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not right now. What was it in 2022? Oh, it was Jungle Cat. Jungle Cat. <laughs> For those of you that a lot of don't know Jungle Cat. Dance music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what it was last year. Okay. Yeah. What do you call ED EDM? EDM. Yeah. I feel like it's just very conducive to like the pace, but also just kind of like drowning out. Like just being able to like get in flow state. Beautiful. How about your favorite place to ride? Do you have one? Ooh, I don't think I've really discovered one yet. I haven't really been in a regular habit. But I have a good time in Florida, for sure, in the winter. Where at? Right in Florida. I mean, I kind of like the Pinellas Trail still. It's a good way to get around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anywhere in Venice, too. We have a lot of good options. Here. Yeah. That's okay. for sure. For sure. Well, I didn't want to take up too much of your time. But... Uh, Greatly appreciate you being here. And I know you're an inspiration to me. And I know all the people in Florida that know you as well as the people in Bend. You're an inspiration to them. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for sponsoring athletes who are uniquely doing things in the community and doing things with support. It's awesome. And you're welcome.